Hello, Bagby Barracudas. Today we are going to do an art project where we practice drawing different kinds of lines to show different kinds of textures. These are the things you need to do this art project. First, we have a little worksheet with texture on the top. You should have a pencil. You should have a stick in your packet that's got a pointy end right there. Then you should also have one piece of folded paper and inside that paper, when you open it up, you should have a shiny black piece of scratch art paper. And we'll show you what to do that with that next. So I'd like you to set this aside for now and put your piece, put your scratch paper aside also. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what texture is. And then we'll practice making some textures in our worksheet. And then we will do a drawing on our scratch paper. So when we're talking about art, texture is a word that means the way something feels. So here is a few different things that have different textures. So the first thing I have here is one of these little seed pods that comes from the liquid amber trees in our neighborhood. Can you see that this is spiky or prickly or sharp? Because it's got these pointy bits that stick out of it, right? It's kind of hard and dry, right? It's rough. We also have a piece of Lego here. This here is bumpy. Can you see the bumps here? When you rub them, you can feel your fingers rub over each little bump, right? They stick out like that. So we have a bumpy piece of Lego. I have a brick, big old heavy brick here. And this is like a rock, right? It's rough. Can you see the texture? You see there's shadows there? The texture here is rough. It feels scratchy when I touch it. It's all kinds of different bumps and holes and sharp edges on it. So that's rough, right? And then we have, I have two bears. Oh, actually, I have a dog and a bear. This is Fozzy. This guy doesn't have a name, but this guy is furry. He's got hairs that stick up. Can you see all the different bits of fur that he has sticking up on him? And they're all going in different directions, right? And then we have this old guy. His name is Fozzy. He has what I would say is soft fur. He's old, so he doesn't, his, he's not furry anymore. His, his, uh, he doesn't have any sticky uppy hairs anymore because he's, well, he's really well loved. But when I touch him, he feels kind of smooth and soft and he's squishy and he's got like some little bumps on him, but he's, um, nice and soft to touch. Then we have this thing. And this is a cactus plant that comes from my garden. And I don't know if you can see, but can you see that this has almost like a needle on the end, right? It's got such a sharp little needle. And these grow in my garden and they're so sharp that if you accidentally walk into them, it's like getting poked. It really hurts, it goes, oh, so sharp. So now we've seen some examples of different textures. Let's talk about how we might use a draw, how we might draw them. So all the things I showed you were three-dimensional, meaning they have four sides and they go all the way around and you can hold them and touch them. But how do we show the texture of something when it's on a flat piece of paper? Well, one of the ways we do that is we use different kinds of lines to show how things will feel when we're drawing them, drawing them on a flat piece of paper. So. A line is a dot that takes a walk. So a line can take a walk in a few different ways. A line can be straight, right? And that might be like a flat table. 
a line could also be curvy. You gotta go ooh, up and down, up and down, up and down, right? Kind of smooth curves, so wavy curves. Or a line might be sharp and it would go sharp and pointy. It would go, ouch, ouch. So these are different kinds of lines that we could show that have kind of different the different looks to them and they communicate different feelings or different textures. In your art supplies, you have a piece of paper that looks like this. And we are going to talk a little bit about how we would use lines to show different kinds of textures on animals or different things in nature. So first we hear we have a, a sheep and it is soft. And how are we gonna show that it has soft feeling? Just like we had Fozzie Bear here. We might give him just soft, bumpy lines, right? Curving lines. This sheep here, you could also do a sheep like this. You could draw curvy lines, spirals, and it would make something look soft. You see how this guy has just curved, soft loops and loops, right? Curving lines, that gives the feeling of something that's soft. This guy here, he is rough like our brick. So he has lots of different lines and shapes and things going in different directions. So we have something that is rough Let's see, let's draw my brick. So my brick had cracks, jaggedy lines. It had a big piece of stuff stuck to it, right? It had something bumping up the top, rough. It had holes, but different shaped holes. And it had sharp corners. So when you put your hand on this, you would feel all the different shapes. It would be rough. So we have something furry, like this guy. He's got all his fur sticking out. So something furry, let's see. We got, a, let's do a rabbit here. We got a rabbit and he has furry ears. He's got lots of little hairs going up. He's got furry hair. Lots of little lines, he's got a nose. Okay, so this is definitely not a rabbit. Maybe he's, maybe he's a bear. <laughs> I heard something recently and that is, never say sorry for your art because art is always about practicing, right? This furry picture is a little better than mine, but here we have, Miss Caitlin's a furry example. Prickly, I got this guy, where's my thing? This is my prickly thing. So this has spikes like this all over it. Prickly, right? This is how we show something prickly. We got the ouch, 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 ouch lines, right? And then we have this. We're gonna draw something sharp. So we have a long leaf. And at the very end, it's got a spike on it. Really sharp spike. How about another one? And then, what about our our Lego. Let's see, pretend. Let's look at. Let's draw our Lego like this. So if it's the flat part of the Lego, it has bumps. And when we look at this, we know that if we put our hand over the top of it, it would feel bumpy, right? So we've talked about how different kinds of lines can make us think 
and imagine different kinds of textures when we look at a drawing. And the way we show different kinds of textures is how our line, our, a line is a dot that takes a walk, so how your line walks shows what the texture is. So this is, ouch, 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 ouch. This is smooth and this is curvy and soft, smooth, right? So let's look at a few examples of texture in drawings on our scratch art paper. So here we have a pufferfish. So you have black paper in your kit that when you scratch at it, it has color underneath. And we're going to scratch away the black and leave a drawing that has lots of different colors. So here we have a pufferfish and he has got spikes, right? I see some bumpy stones on the bottom of the ocean here. And I see some smooth seaweed and some waves in the, in the water. Here's an example of a fish. The water's got smooth waves. The texture here, the splash of the water, you see the drops flying up. And then you can see the texture of the fish, that it has all of these scales, right? Here we have Mr. Porcupine. And I have a few different textures here. So the porcupine's got spikes. He's got his quills sticking up all over the place. Then we also have a tree here and it's got the bark, has lots of lines to show that the bark has a texture, it might be a rough bark. And then we have different shapes for leaves. Oops. And here we have a lamb in a meadow with a hill behind them. And these curly lines show that the sheep is soft and we have some wispy grass here, and here are a couple flowers that look like they might be soft too. And finally, I have one more example. I have a fish. And this fish has scales also. And this one has kind of a fun artistic design. It's got like a headband. Okay, so what we're looking for in our drawing today is different patterns and textures and different kinds of lines to show what kind of animal and what they might feel like or what their, um, where they live, what their environment might look like. So now it's time for us to practice what we've learned. So in your art supplies, you should have a piece of paper that's folded into a half sheet and you can turn it over, you can use the front, you can use the back. The first thing I want you to do is we're going to imagine an animal and where it might live. So here's an example. I showed you some other, I showed you some examples already, but I'm gonna do this example. I want you to use the regular scratch paper, the regular this paper to make your design before you put it onto this paper. Okay? We're going to Think of what kind of animal do I have and what kind of texture they have and where would this animal live? So here we have a lizard with scales. Can you see the lines, the ouch, 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 jaggedy lines that make his scales? He's got a pointy tongue that's reaching out to this little fly here. He's sitting on a rock that's probably smooth. We have some grass here that looks like it might be maybe not spiky, but maybe it's flowing in the wind. Then we have a cactus, because he's a desert lizard, and the cactus has needle spikes, right? And then he's also laying on some, the ground here has stones on it, and it's probably bumpy or rough. And then, this is not a texture, but the sun has these wavy lines that are showing that it's a hot sun. It gives us the feeling of a hot sun like that. What I'd like you to do is pause your video and think about what kind of drawing you would like to do and make a quick practice sketch on your scratch paper. What you should do is make sure you have an animal and a place where your animal is living and what kinds of things would be in the place your animal is living. 
And finally, let's try and make sure that we use the whole page, right? We wanna make sure there's something here, there's something in the middle, there's something in the corner so that we fill the whole page and not just, we don't want a piece of art that has just like one thing on the corner right here, right? We wanna give some, make sure there's space. So we have an animal, he's on or in something, and we have what kinds of things are living or growing or around that animal. Same thing as this guy, for example. We have our fish, he's got a starfish friend, and he's got some seaweed, he's got stones underneath him, and he's got some water all around him. So once you have made your practice sketch and you know what your design is going to be, we're going to transfer that design or copy it to the black scratch paper. So this scratch paper, um, it can pick up your fingerprints, so maybe just try and hold it on the edges. The other thing is, it was in an envelope and it came from your, from school to your house and if it has a couple scratches on it and it's not perfectly black, don't worry about it. Once you put your design on it, it'll look just great. So, let's see. Let's show you how this works. So this scratch paper, you have your stick and when you scratch away the black, you're gonna see colors underneath. So I'm gonna make my stones on the ground here. And I'm gonna continue drawing and you can pause or follow along and see how I do it. Okay, I'm gonna slow down and look at the finishing touches with you. So we got our spiky scales on our lizard. And I don't know if you've ever seen a garden lizard. They have sharp little fingernails. So I'm gonna give him some sharp fingernails. Okay, he's got a tongue sticking out, stick his mouth here, oh, here we go. We've got our fly and we have our spines on the cactus. And so now I have all this empty space here, got lots of stuff in the bottom. So what can I put in the sky of my desert scene here? We should give it some, I definitely wanna have a sun. And why don't we go like this, get us layers of sun. Scratch away some more so we get a brighter color here. And the more you scratch, the more black you take away and the more you get more lines. So then we're gonna make our heat. These are hot waves of sunshine. Okay. And I think finally we need some birds. So we're gonna do one bird that's big, which means he's close up. We're gonna do one bird that's medium, which means he's a little further away, and we're gonna do one little bird that's smaller, and that means he's much further away. So, keep working on your drawing until you feel like you have lots of different types of lines, squiggly lines, curved lines, round shapes, square shapes, spiky shapes, and when you're finished, please be sure to take a picture and send it to and send it to bagbyartvistas at gmail.com so we can make sure that we all get to share and enjoy your art on the Bagby News Network virtual art show.